the mayor is here this morning. He's got a rather busy schedule. Those who have uh, been here living in Jerusalem over the last several weeks who watch what's going on in the world understand that uh, Mayor Nir Barakat doesn't have a, a simple job. And we're very, very privileged to have such an incredible mayor who has basically just devoted his life to building and improving our city. I'm uh, very lucky to call him a friend and a, a dear friend who I've known for over 20 years. Uh, I know Nir back when he was an entrepreneur and uh, going into the deepest reaches of the United States South to sell antivirus software. He then made simply the most spectacular high-tech investment ever. Okay, I, I think that no one can you know, uh, match his IRR because he made it as a convertible loan, got his money back and then got the equity in a small company called Checkpoint. Uh, and because of that investment, I think the mayor today is a, a, uh, able to work for a, it's a, a shekel a year or, uh, you know, for Jerusalem. And we're very proud. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just that we're here in Jerusalem and appropriate to have the mayor, but really he represents everything that we're about, which is both incredible entrepreneurship, really smart investors, and people who give back to the community. Mayor Nir Barakat, please. Thank you, John. You made me blush. Uh, welcome to Jerusalem, everyone. Actually, I have to say, I have, I have a bit of a deja vu uh, entering this uh, amazing Global Investor uh, Summit, John. Uh, and I remember at the late 80s, beginning of the 90s, wandering around the world to all these conferences, learning, get, catching up uh, on the learning curve, um, learning from peers, and having this uh, Our Crowd Global Investor Summit here in Jerusalem is a huge uh, joy for me, and I'm, I'm very, very happy uh, we're here. And I'd like to take you a little bit off the Our Crowd agenda, talk about the city of Jerusalem, my vision for the city, what we're doing in our city, and then maybe connect it back to what you folks are uh, focusing on here today. Uh, indeed, um, I view myself as a public entrepreneur. And similarly to uh, creating companies or developing companies, I think it's important to have a very clear vision of where you want to take, in my case, the city of Jerusalem. <clears throat> and I believe that once you understand the vision and the huge potential we have, then lots of the strategies and tactics um, that we're developing in the city of Jerusalem will be very clear to you because they're all derived from that major vision and future and huge potential of Jerusalem. And I'd like to share that with you. And the best way <clears throat> to share with you the future of the city is to take you back three and a half thousand years <laughs> to the time the city was founded. And it was the time when the people of Israel left Egypt and came back to the land of Israel and each of the 12 tribes had a piece of land, a piece of territory where they created their cities and way of life and our crowds. And there is one exception and that exception was the city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem by design was the center, center of practically Israel in essence, the universe. You had the holy temple right in the center, and people used to come in and out the city minimum three times a year. Jerusalem, because it was not divided to tribes, had at any given moment practically all people present from all tribes. Jews and non-Jews alike were welcome to the gates of the city. To remind you at the time, there were no Christians that came a thousand plus years later. There were no Muslims that came 1,600 years later. But everyone was accepted and welcomed to the gates of the city of Jerusalem. Um, the Hebrew speakers probably know, uh, know the, the, uh, the famous sentence, Yerushalayim osa kol Israel chavirim. Jerusalem makes all people friends. I believe 
It has a lot to do with the way the city functioned. Because at any given moment, you had people from all tribes, from all over the world, and since there's no, it wasn't a specific home of any specific tribe, it created a psychological, psychological effect that when you come to Jerusalem, everyone is peer. Um, we're all here shareholders, equal shareholders of the city of Jerusalem. Therefore, it was the only place that you weren't hosting your friend as a guest. Everyone felt ownership of the city of Jerusalem, and all people, cre it was the only place in the world that had that kind of psychological effect. And that's when people say, Yerushalayim osa kol Yisrael chavirim, Jerusalem made everyone friendly. There's another very famous uh, uh, sentence that I'd like to interpret, which is, Ki mitzion tetze Torah. From Zion, new thought leadership, new Torah, always comes out. And uh, the reason is that uh, because of the inflow and outflow of people to Jerusalem, we didn't have internet at the time, no phones, the best way to communicate what's new and what's successful is that if it's successful in the city of Jerusalem, all tribes immediately go back home and say, here's a new standard developed in the city of Jerusalem. Because if it was successful in Jerusalem, where at any given moment all tribes have representatives, then they all go back home and define new de facto standards. And that role is a hub of the world. The center of religion, the center of innovation, the center of new thought leadership was the role Jerusalem played 3,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago. In many ways, Jerusalem is the foundation of modern democracy the way we know it in the Western world. Everyone was different, but when they, they come to Jerusalem, they're all equal in rights, in respect, in anything you want. So that special model of the city of Jerusalem is an asset. It's part of the brand Jerusalem. And in many, many ways, it's our future. If you deep, deeply understand the role Jerusalem plays for over 4 billion people around the world, uh, you understand what huge potential we have into the future. And now, I derive all my strategies from that deep understanding of the role Jerusalem has to play in the world. I manage Jerusalem in a wide coalition. We have a 31 council member, um, uh, our council is 31 council members, and 28 of them are in the coalition. Um, we manage the philosophy of the thinking of how do we focus on the common denominator of Jerusalem. My experience is that if I get something done and get acceptance through a wide coalition, nobody ever argues with us what's the right thing to do. Since when we propose a new idea to the parliament or the uh, government, and the government knows that behind the ideas are an array of a wide coalition in the city of Jerusalem, it's accepted as a sort of de facto standard. And when we develop the city of Jerusalem towards those goals, then un ama amazing things happen. The city flies. And uh, I could tell you as a public entrepreneur that once you have the vision, it's easier to, dis uh, to, to um, um, create goals and, uh, um, and ideas and work with the management team and my partners in the coalition um, in, in, the, in the city management, the, everything falls into place. What I'd like to do now is actually share with you some of the ideas of how to develop the city to its potential on the economic side, which is aligned with the vision I shared with you. So what I did about nine, ten years ago, I went to Professor Michael Porter in the Harvard Business School. Uh, we're actually engaging again to do another thorough research about Jerusalem's competitive advantages. One of them is the brand Jerusalem, which is one of the strongest brands in the world. And interestingly enough, you can imagine that uh, culture tourism is one of the major economic drivers of our city. Uh, so for economic development um, is to define measurable, achievable goals that help us get to fulfill the vision. And when we did some comparable work, uh, uh, New York has 50 million tourists a year, Rome has 40 million tourists a year, Paris has over 60. 
Cyprus has 10 million tourists a year. At the time when we did the research, Jerusalem was maxed at just over 2 million tourists a year. So I set a goal, a long-term goal, of accomplishing 10 million tourists a year. If Cyprus could do 10, Jerusalem could do 10. And in order to get there, my role in many, many ways is being a market maker, create that demand, focus on how to bring more people to the city of Jerusalem. And we've created sub-brands like the Jerusalem Marathon that gets 26,000 runners, and we've created a hub for, uh, um, uh, we created another major event in the old city, the Light Festival, and we have an array of festivals, and uh, it may be culture, maybe tourism, maybe event, uh, uh, sports, maybe other events. We've decided to develop Jerusalem as a destination for uh, uh, conferences, and we're uh, creating a conference uh, uh, um, bureau. And thank God we see that uh, economics, through uh, expanding Jerusalem as a destination for tourists and pilgrims and uh, investors, is taking off. Another business cluster, which you articulated with uh, Professor Michael Porter, is the business cluster of health life sciences and slightly uh, high tech in general. Uh, our market share in health life sciences in the national gov in, in, in Israel is um, exceeded 30% in, and uh, growing. And in the last uh, three years, we, see, we saw the number of startups jump from 14 to 40 to over 100 this year. Uh, um, you mentioned uh, Mobileye. Yeah, it's, it's a big accomplishment for us. Mobileye was mentioned here. It's actually a um, billion raise, $11 billion uh, worth of company that just went public less than half a year ago, three, four months ago. There are 500 employees here in Jerusalem based on technology from the he Hebrew University. And we see the investments we're making, the Jerusalem Development Authority, which is a joint venture between the national government and the municipality, uh, the investments we're making in creating the ecosystem to enable more entrepreneurs more people invest or decide to locate their companies in Jerusalem is creating a very, very powerful uh, effect on entrepreneurs that uh, decide to locate in the city of Jerusalem. Naturally, things go together. When you have uh, um, the quality of life goes up and you have more cultural events and more cafes and open business, new, new businesses open up, the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, creates, um, um, it's, it's very viral, and indeed we see more and more uh, companies and startups decide to allocate themselves in the city of Jerusalem. And that's where um, my friend uh, John and our crowd fits in. Innovative models, innovative thinking, where Israeli entrepreneurs um, have an opportunity to stay in the city of Jerusalem and work globally. As an entrepreneur, I believe that Israeli entrepreneurs have a huge future, and the flatter the world is, and more uh, crowdsourcing and uh, more um, uh, development is made over the internet as a platform, our competitive advantage grows. And that is due to, um, you all know, uh, lots of uh, research and development, and young leadership is developed in the Israeli army as a company commander in the paratroopers. When we founded our uh, um, BRM uh, uh, partnership, uh, one came from uh, R&D in the Air Force. The other came from R&D in the Intelligence Force. And two of us came from uh, the paratrooper brigade, uh, where we were both uh, officers. And that integration of uh, uh, combat experience taking responsibility, uh, managing risk, um, and lots of R&D. Um, that experience is second to none at an early age. The second point is the fact that we're so tiny uh, in Israel, the, the market's so tiny, forces our entrepreneurs to go global as fast as possible. And we now have a track record of successful uh, entrepreneurs uh, that love to share their information uh, with their friends in order to take it to the next level. Genes never hurt. Uh, our genes, I assume uh, the Jewish gene never hurts, and I think the combination of all that creates a huge future for Israeli entrepreneurs that know how to work globally, 
that know how to take advantage of uh, the flat world, how to do better for the next generations. And you take that experience, mesh, uh, mesh it, work it together with the future of the city of Jerusalem, I believe we have a huge future ahead of us. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, and I look at the Middle East, where around us countries are falling apart. And the Israeli economy, in spite of all the challenges, is not dipping, has not dipped, throughout, um, even throughout the wars and throughout uh, the challenges we have. We're probably doing something right. And we all, uh, us Israelis, uh, we're all, every once in a while, we know how to moan and groan and complain, which is part of our life. That's why we move so fast in, uh, uh, as entrepreneurs. Uh, but when I look into the future, I'm very optimistic that indeed we know how to overcome those challenges. Uh, we've overcome much, much bigger challenges. And I believe that the future is way ahead of us. And through conferences like this, through entrepreneurs, through people that decide to locate them, uh, their businesses in the city of Jerusalem, we're strengthening ourselves and developing and creating a better future for our kids. I want to wish you all a very successful conference. Don't forget to use some time, take some time off, go to the city of David, go to the holy sites, breathe the air of the city of Jerusalem, do some business here, and come back and see us. See us next year in the next conference. Thank you so much.